Giovanni from Allen Beek, the creative drinks agency that specializes in design, development and marketing of quality drinks, education and beverage experiences. Allen Beek and ICCA Dubai together brings to you Cocktail Zero, the art of alcohol-free design drinks. Our certificate programs in dry mixology and bartending shongshi are designed not only for inspiring bar professionals working in the industry, but also for the serious enthusiasts interested in learning the art of a mixology. Come, introduce yourself to the fascinating and soul-stirring world of alcohol-free designer drinks. Good afternoon from Dubai. Welcome back to ICCA Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today, we have yet another interesting session in the series of dry mixology and bartending. Food pairing, making flavors come alive. I would now like to hand over to our host, Sanaj Raja, Director of Courses at the ICCA Dubai. Over to you, Sanaj. Thank you, Karun. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our fifth exciting webinar in the series dry mixology and bartending. Just a recap on what we've completed in our previous webinars. We started with tools of the trade, then went on to methods and techniques, then choosing the right glassware, and then into the categories of cocktails, rather mocktails in this case. Last week we did aperitifs, and this week it's about choosing the right flavors to complement food. The other webinars are available for you to view on YouTube. And for those of you who are with us for the first time, a very, very short intro on Mr. G, on Master Mixologist Giovanni De Pergola, fondly known as Mr. G by all of us. Mr. G has over 20 years of experience in the beverage industry in Europe and the MENA region. And he is also the co-founder of Alembic, a creative drinks agency which specializes in training and education. During the session with Mr. G, he will have a few questions for you, which will pop up as polls. And if you have a few questions for us, do put it up into the chat and I will take it up with Mr. G for you. Without taking more of your time, over to you, Mr. G. Excellent, Shanas, thank you very much. Uh, as usual, what a great introduction. Thank you, Karun, to open the session. And really, thank you very much for all the joiners today because uh, it's, it's another great episode. I mean, really, really interesting today because we talk about food pairing, you know, something that is so cliche if we look in, in, in so many aspects, but it's so important really to have a good drinks with, with an excellent food, you know, and that's always the case. So um, as John has mentioned, we saw at the very early our episode dedicated completely to the, really the fundamentals of the bars because what we do here at our course is really we go through the details, the ABC, the fundamentals of understanding how to use the correct glassware, how to use the, the right method and technique, the right tools to use when we actually going to make a cocktail. Cocktail, Because these really implement uh, and really can affect the final flavors of our uh, wonderful cocktail zero. So dry mixology is all about discovering the beauty of all those elements that really comes together. And it's our pleasure because here in ICCA, we have a, such a great venue where we really, we really immerse ourselves in a, in a really, what we believe to be one of the best environment to really come and train yourself. So the really today, I think is a great combination because we will talk about the, actually the drinks and the food. So ICCA is actually, it stands for the International Culinary Center of Arts. So there's a lot of young chefs that come in to study here. And for us, you know, talk about dry mixologies. When I come here for the first time, we really see all this came together. And today we have actually the opportunity to see when you can have like a good cocktails together along with your favorite food. So really that is something that very unique. Now, before we actually going to make it something, you see, I've got a beautiful basil here. Then I've got a few hidden ingredients behind me. Uh, so what is important to understand? Uh, what about food pairing? You know, uh, we know that when we go to a restaurant or to our favorite bars, uh, we really go with this classic, you know, you know, your, you have your meat with your red wine, you have your fish with your white wine, 
and you have you know your oyster with some champagne uh, well you know those are the, the the rules that many people tell us to believe uh, but it's not really like this it's very personal at the end of the day we all know that of course there are certain dish that really take advantage of the style of the drinks that we're going to design because this is very important now yes there is rules but our, at the same time it's very personal so we need to think that our tasting buds are really personal and really can can really vary and change between people to person to person i give an example me as a person uh, coming from south of italy we're very into uh, classic mediterranean flavors so i'm talking about uh, fresh lemons i'm talking about uh, fresh herbs so, so this is the way we really uh, pretty much we grow up in our on our tasting buds you know uh, natural salty from the sea so it's really this is what we're looking for um loving living here in dubai i discover the beauty of uh, of the uh, the essence of spices you know such a great really uh, environment to dip yourself you know to discover usage of spices and now can really they uh, enhance flavors so from a, a classic chili point of view you know but also to to some of the barks like cinnamon you know a star anise that is used in a, in a indian cuisine for instance but also a lot of the asian they are using uh, the lemongrass the kefir lime leaves we saw this last time when we decorated our cocktail with some nice kefir kefir lime leaves so this is extremely important what we really need to know that uh, the drinks really makes a big difference when we are sitting for a great meal imagine that you use the drink to actually to do a palate cleanser you know uh, between dishes you know so we have our main course and then we we really cut uh, with something to prepare or we saw last time an aperitif you know something that prepare ourselves to go through uh, so really to prepare for a beautiful meal so this is how important are the flavor into the cocktail so really really important so in terms of really understanding the uh, the the abc is what we need that uh, we know that citrus lemon and orange that really they cut into the fattiness of of a certain fishes for instance so a classic salmon we rewalk with a beautiful slice of lemon and of course in a nice lemonade and citrus so this all works or maybe you have your favorite pasta, you know? But this is another thing. When people talk to me as an Italian, they say, oh, I love pasta, you know? But pasta for us is a, is a world, you know? We have so many different variations and also so many different condiments that you can put together. So that's really, really, is how we're gonna look that together. So always the, the details is what we need to look. And when I'm saying the details, is understanding the sweetness to balance, you know, salt and sweetness, love it you know many people go mad for that salty caramel if you're looking to the dessert you know salt and sweetness so really really interesting but also the bitterness element and this is something also if you look that you know in a no alcoholic world we don't really have the tannin if you imagine you know that we have in red wine where we have to really pair that in our cocktail or in our, with our steak if you talk about meat so what's happening then that you really have something related so to the tannin so imagine that something which is very dry a tannin in in how do we really perceive is when our gum goes really dry so that's really come from a beautiful pomegranate for instance a, a cranberry a very dry style of a berry can really implement or a cool beetroot you know so we at the school here the guys they have so much to explore when we do this kind of tasting because they can actually implement and you will see and uh, well today actually i'm going to make a couple recipes and uh, uh, with the food pairing so we have a beautiful recipes to showcase to you not the food only the drinks the food the chefs here in icca they helped me already they have the food which is ongoing and it will be past me meanwhile we are going to do a live session today so shanaz before we actually more moving into the the session and i will do the my wonderful demo cocktail here uh, shall we uh, i think we prepare a couple of polls if i'm not if i'm not wrong yeah okay so the first question is from from Giovanni to everyone which cocktail zero style per style would you recommend with seafood cooked in mediterranean flavors okay a wide I like. variety of answers coming in okay i like that you know i had to specify that mediterranean thing because you know fish 
and, and it can be cooked in a different way, depending where you're coming from. And I will see, actually, I will, I will have a look through the, all the answers that are coming through. Uh, Shana, is our people answering? Yes. And there are 65 percent who say it's citrus based. 21 percent say it's uh, carbonated and herbal. And 13 percent say still and fruity. Okay. Sorry. Can you tell me again the percentage between the uh, the, the 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 second and the third? The carbonated is 20 percent, and the still and fruity is about 15 percent. 50 minutes. Okay. So majority of people, well done. Thank you very much. Yes, we will look into some citrus. That's what we want. However, I would like to, uh, you know, just to go back when we discussed this at the beginning, when we say that it's very personal. Uh, now, for me, living in a very multi, uh, you know, multi society here in Dubai, we really learn the beauty of exchanging flavor profile and be very experimented at the end of the day. So really, I know, we, we, you know, the guys, they always let me try uh, some spicy food, for instance, or some other uh, uh, elements that are really interesting. And of course, you know, for us, for the Mediterranean, as mentioned, something that very classic really goes with a bit of a lemony style. So it can be, uh, when I say carbonation is always welcome, however, even a classic still lemonade will do it. So that's something very important to remember. A bit more on the dry side, not over sweet because otherwise the sweetness really doesn't go with the simplicity of the fish. So that's really uh, good to know. Uh, and then in terms of the carbonation herbal, I will say that, you know, there could be some people that would love to do that. Imagine that, I you know, you put your classic sparkling water, a bit of a lemon and a few uh, leaves of, uh, of, the, of your favorite uh, herbal. So it could be a basil or could be your za'atar, you know, if you are here in the Middle East or fresh mint really will work very well. So that's, again, a very personal. Probably the one is a no-no is something that is a, is a juice. Now, again, a no-no definitely for me, for majority of people, but hey, if someone prefer to have an orange juice with their fish, I will not, I will not uh, say no person, uh, you know, if we are running a business. However, we like to recommend, you know, uh, some of a combination, which is really important to remember. So a still juice normally is quite fruity. Imagine a, a pineapple or passion fruit or an orange or others that really, you know, it could be too much overpowering the delicacies of, of a fish. So that's something. Okay, Shanas, thank you very much. That was great. I like it. So I think I'm ready to make the cocktail. And uh, the cocktail zero today is one of our favorite in terms of showcasing the simplicity because what we want to show you is the simplicity, how the cocktail can be made. And really this one, it has a, a, a full inspiration from a classic cocktail that is a very famous here in the Middle East, which is called the lemon mint. So what I will do, I will show you is, and this is how we pretty much doing. I will have the, oh, the look the lemon I found today, beautiful. When I found today this lemon, I really, really fell in love because you know, remind me our lemon from Italy, you know, the Sorrento, you know, coming from opposite coast of that. So we really have this beautiful lemon with a thick skin. Oh, there's so much oil there. So what we're going to do here, uh, I would like to show you, but I think we have uh, what we can do before I start making the cocktail. I think we should have Shanas. Can you remind me? Uh, here we go. Yes, yes, yes. I think we can, sh we can share this to our uh, viewers. So uh, by the way, uh, these recipes, they will be available at the end for you to download. So everything will be there. So what we see here, we see lemon wedges, and this is how I was about to do it. Then we have some mint leaves, then we have some uh, basil, and then we have some really droplets. Now, what is a droplet? Are those bitter? We can go back on the main camera here and I'll show you. So this is where, uh, this is a beautiful cardamom bitter. Now, this cocktail is will be a shaken cocktail. What are we going to do it? We'll put all the ingredients inside the shaker and then we will actually uh, uh, strain into our glass. So let me go and make it for you. This is what we do it. So three drops of the cardamom bitter. Now cardamom really, really works so well with the entire flavor profile we're going to look for. Now I will have, now I mentioned on the recipe, three lemon wedges. Now those three lemon wedges are a bit too large, you know, always considering 
the amount of what we need. So what I will do here, I will definitely squeeze one lemon here. And what we want is around 10 to 15 milliliter of lemon. Now, here it is a bit bigger. So this is what I will do. Excellent. And then what I will do here, I will probably, there we go. I will squeeze this lemon straight into the glass. Ooh, fantastic. Eh? And then this is our lovely, nice, ready to go. And pretty much the lemon is inside. The lemon is inside with the cardamom, ready to get with basil leaves. So let me go and pick some three, I will say four nice large leaves. Why are we going to shake this cocktail is because we're going to add some um, uh, dilution at the end of the day. We want, want the lemon, the eyes to break into the skin, so to extract a bit of uh, extra oil of the lemon. And then I will go with some nice, lovely mint. There we go. Oh, nice. Oh, very nice mint. This was uh, picked by Terry, by the way, today. She brought me this fantastic mint. Thank you very much, Terry. Et voila. And now we will have to have a beautiful, nice, shaky technique. The other ingredients will be our favorite lemony style of a cocktail which i lost my bottle open no i have it here there we go so this is our favorite cedrata tassoni this is an incredible really lime the cedro is a specific from italy so that's really does this uh, gives a very lemony is a carbonated so as usual we don't shake carbonated cocktail with the uh, inside the shaker so what we're going to do we're going to top it up at the end so pretty much all the ingredients on this side and one we'll do ready to shake a bit of mixing, but without the ice, we can't shake too much, no? There we go. Ooh, love it. Let me see if I can show you what exactly I mean when I do this. Let me show you on one uh, other camera here. Let's see. Fantastic. You can see everything break it inside here. All the lime, sorry, the, the lemon, the mint, and the basil all inside. And the aroma that comes out is really, really unique. Here's what we do. We top it up now with our cedrata tassoni. A gently mix. We always say that we love the live session, but we still, it doesn't matter how much technology we have, we can still pass you the aroma, the perfume that really comes out here now, this super, super fresh. My lemon is inside. I always say garnish is very important. So I will have, personally, I like to add a bit of a mint at the end on top, but also few lime, sorry, few uh, mint leaves. There we go, inside here. Because what's gonna happen, we will have those nice mint leaves floating around, super cool. And here today is in a mix, super simple cocktail, but has a mix of a technique. Excellent. So what you see here, it was a mix of a technique for the people that they've been watching us lately. You can see there were a lot of different techniques we've been using. We use the shaking technique, then we have the stir, then we double strain. So sometimes it's a, such a simple recipe, we can add elements together. So what we're gonna do here, a lovely, nice stem of mint, and then I will also add some nice basil from my garden. There we go. Let me see. This is the one. Excellent. Now, this is our classic basil lemon mint. So really, really superb the way it looks. Very fresh. It tastes fantastic. Let me try. Mm. 
The reason we double strain is because this is the look we want. There we go. I will put it here so you guys can actually see much better. So you can really see the look is very clean. There is no pieces of mint inside and everything. Now, as mentioned, today is about food pairing. And on our recipe here, we were showcasing the, uh, we suggested that a cocktail should be served with the food. Lemon mint really goes well. Herbal, carbonated citrus. This is a classic bruschetta. Nice, really. You can see the basil recalling everything and the tomato. So this is another, another classic, really super classic combination. So simple. Also, two drink, two the drinks and the food, you know, easy to make it. And then the bruschetta with some nice, uh, there is a, some nice cheese on top, you know. And then of course you can have the some uh, some of the the cream that can be made from artichoke also very herbal that really really works super well so this is pretty much a, a great lemon mint and with the uh, uh, the bruschetta now we also have on our recipe we showcase to you we say some quiche uh, another great sample really how to uh, we can have quiche with salmon for instance you know that really work very well what we ask very clear is that lemony flavors you know the, it really cuts through the fatness so really works very well the tomato also with the peppers you know that really interesting and it's roasted peppers beautiful really that style of mediterranean now don't forget when you add spiciness on top uh, sometimes is it can be tricky now before i will talk about spiciness i think uh, shanas we have one more poll for our uh, friends there at home uh, before we present in the second cocktail correct The question is, which, oh, cocktail, lost which cocktail zero style would you recommend with seafood cooked with Mediterranean flavors? But this was our first poll, I think. Yes, this was our first poll. Just give me a moment. I clicked on the same poll again. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, when I read it, I that That's it. fantastic. Oh. That's the beauty to be live. Eh? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no editing, no editing out your mistakes. Okay, which soft drink would you pair with curry? Sparkling water, cola, or ginger ale? Ah, like, yes, yes, I remember. We, we discussed about this with the guys uh, before. I'm really curious to know what, what the people they have to say now. They are very divided on this. Okay, let me show my screen here. Let me see. Okay, so 20, 27% say sparkling water, now it's 25% say cola, and 50% say ginger ale. Yeah, hey, very nice, very nice. I, I congratulations for the people that really goes by ginger ale. Ginger ale is a very high recommended when we talk about like a, it's definitely a curry style, so a bit of a spiciness there. Really, really works so well because it complements the, the cool down of the curry. And I'm sure the people, they uh, answer the correct answer, the correct uh, question uh, is because they really are the actually the people they love to have the curry. Now, curry can be spices or no spices, you know. Uh, I'm definitely a person that really goes soft on spice. I don't uh, really enjoy uh, too much, but I have many good friends of mine that really go for it. And I must say, depending on the level of spiciness, that you really can enjoy in a different way. So in terms of also or chili, because spice not only is chili, but it's also a mix of different other ingredients that we can see. So now for the rest of the people, they will say cola, you know, a classic cola normally, um, it could have, you know, nowadays on the market, we find a lot of very interesting cola, herbal style. However, they tend to always to overpower, you know, but the sweetness is quite high. So unless we find something quite low, okay, can be quite interesting. And the other one was, which one we mentioned? We said the ginger ale, the cola, and what else we said, sparkling water? I think it was a sparkling water, yes, yes. So uh, sparkling water, I will say, you know, it's always a great palate cleanser uh, when you really go as a beginning. But if you go for sparkling water, don't forget, it could be too much bubble there. And if it's not cut with, the, with, the, with a bit of a citrus there, it could be uh, really doesn't really work. That's why a lot of people, uh, prefer also when it's too spicy to go for the yogurt, you know, 
in terms of really cool down. So that was very interesting to see that people love it. I'm a big fan of ginger ale in my time, uh, myself as well. So really go for that. So I will I remove have two this. quick questions for you before you go forward, Giovanni. Okay, I, I'm yeah. just going to uh, pass this to uh, our friends behind the camera so at least they can have their lunch. Eh? <laughs> Okay, so the, it's, these are private questions that have come to us and one is, can I serve a cola drink with pasta, with a pasta dish? A cola based mocktail with a pasta dish. A cola uh, base, okay, with the pasta dish. All right, now, uh, mentioned at the beginning, and thank you for this question, thank you very much. Uh, we like that interaction. What happened at the beginning when I mentioned about pasta, depend on what style of pasta we are looking for. Probably many people, when they refer to a pasta dish, they probably refer to something with the classic, I will say, tomato sauce. Uh, now imagine that tomato has a good level of uh, umami and acidity. So um, it's quite normally served with some olive oil. So it's quite balanced. So I will say that probably cola with the pasta, it, it, it could overpower, you know, because of the level of sweetness. So it really will clash. With that, with that style. So I would recommend not a cola or something much more with the pasta. You know, just a, a still water will work, a sparkling water will work, or depending on which pasta we are talking about, then you can actually go with something a bit more herbal, I will say, in that sense. So thank you very much for the question. Another quick one, just before you go into your next cocktail. Beautiful. Uh, this is private and from the heart, it says, during the course, do I get to taste what taste the dish and the drink together? Ah, okay, I like this. This came from really for someone interesting to join us here. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much. You know, first of all, for the interest and for the question, I will say that uh, yes, uh, every single uh, student that come with us, they they really have a good time. Uh, that's for sure. So they, when we do our, all our sessions on making and tasting, and that is uh, is for uh, food and drinks. So uh, and there's a plenty going on here. So 100%. The best way to know uh, uh, to to know actually is always tasting. So sometimes uh, even myself, uh, well, I will say a lot of the time uh, I do a lot of tasting. And sometimes when we do uh, try new recipes or when we try single ingredients. It doesn't really go as as it was planned. So sometimes my face goes a bit funny because the flavor profile wasn't there. But this is how we do it. So very important to train your palate, extremely important. But the most important is to train your nose. The first thing we always do is train your nose. So when the, the students are coming here, uh, when they leave, we like to them to be stimulated by the curiosity. So when you go to the supermarket, when you go to your grocery shop, you grab a peach, smell the peach, you know, see how much you can really take it. Because don't forget, we always buy when we look something, something that looks good, but something that come close to us, immediately we buy by our smell. And if something smells really up to our nose, we really go for it. So it's very important that we train our nose because when we do tasting, we need to explore all those kind of things. So very interesting question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shanas, more questions we have? No, Giovanni, we can go to the next cocktail, the mocktail. Cocktail zero, excellent, good. So what we have, our second recipe is, um, is a classic, you know, it's another classic. Well, this is actually, and I, I can show you now on the screen. This is actually called a Paloma. Now, Paloma in general, we have this cocktail in a classic world. It's made with tequila, grapefruit. And what you see here, we call the, the spicy gin Paloma. So we bring a little element of spiciness inside. We bring in a gin, a no-alcoholic gin, of course, pretty trendy at the moment. And this is another thing that we always had. We're gonna have some apple juice that really works as a, a bit of a softener in terms of the recipe, a bit of a grapefruit, and then all get together. So let me grab all the ingredients for you so then we see together. I will have my nice lemonade here just to do the top up. Then I will get my hot chili. There we go. Then, Ah, here we go. This is my grapefruit. 
here. And now, really, a grapefruit is absolutely so sexy when you cut into the smell of the of the pink grapefruit is always very floral. So imagine all this now will work with the no alcoholic gin, with the botanicals, with the chili, with the actual lemonade, and really, really works so well. I, I mentioned the apple will work as a as a really as a softener altogether. So as we do now, this recipe is also for the people that have been watching us, you will see that we're gonna have a bit of a mix of actually the uh, the mix of the ingredients here, the bit of a mix of the techniques as well. So check this out, I will show it to you. So what we're gonna have here is this. So we have our uh, rocks glass. And first of all, I will squeeze inside two wedge of the grapefruit. And this is so nice. One second, there we go. So this is what we do. Then what we're gonna have here, we prepare our mixing glass. And here is where we're gonna squeeze the other grapefruit. There we go. Love it, you know? The perfume at this level is insane. I will add the apple juice. And we always using an organic apple juice here, green. So pretty much granny's meat style. Now the Paloma is normally made with the tequila. So tequila coming from the uh, agave plant. Since we all do everything with the cocktail zero here, what we're gonna have, we're gonna have just a 10 milliliter of a sweetener. So the sweetness of the agave. The agave is actually an extract of a plant. Uh, so the tequila comes from the agave. So this one is actually the same plant. So it's agave nectar, it's coming from the plants. It's an extract, like a sugar. Very, very uh, healthy style of, uh, of sweetening our uh, our favorite beverage so because the way it breaks down in the body is much more faster so a lot of people also with diabetes they prefer to use the agave but you gotta use the good organic agave plant so now that the agave is inside i will add my chili and i guarantee this is something i will put one more because i will taste it for today so that's something i will do it and then what we do is very much, I will have to have mixing all together and then we will serve inside our rocks glass. And the garnish here is super simple because we'll go very herbal. As you saw in the picture, we'll, we'll add some thyme. Thyme really works so well. The flavor it does, it, it really hits you. And there is a lot of a different thyme. The one we're using is a lemon thyme. So very, very herbal and citrus. I will say, let's go with the eyes. And I will have a splash of the lemonade. Now here you can have your favorite soda as well. I'm using a, a classic lemonade, but at the same time, if you guys are using, oh, look at this. So when we do the steering technique, don't forget, we're just going to really mix well the sweetness. I can hear, I can really smell the spiciness comes on top. Really, really, all the traveling of the spicy chili, very interesting. And why we, we brought this uh, element of the chili inside is because what we really, wanted is to create something that recall the classic Paloma, which is a Mexican style of drinking tequila with grapefruit. Uh, sometimes we saw in the recipe, we add some a pinch of salt. Now salt, because I'm using lemonade, I will not really put the salt, but if you're using a tonic water, for instance, and you put a pinch of salt, will be very interesting because the salt, the yodin react with the, all the, all the actually the, the, the barks, and really the, the quinine, which is the main ingredient of tonic, and you really make it a bit sweeter. So very, very interesting experiment you can try. So this is what we do here. I will not use any double strain because easy enough 
I would like to have those really pieces of the of the grapefruit around. And what I will do, I will garnish with the thyme. Mm? I love this because it's definitely one of my favorite herbs to use. It's so elegant and it really works in the moment we are going to add and bring on our nose. Mm? Let me try. Let me try. Mm. Ooh, I like the kick, the kick. Now, let me show to you what we prepare for this one. And this is the nice tacos. This is what we do. Let me see if I actually, I will have this angle. I think it's much better. Now, tacos could be a fish taco, so you can marinate it. It can be a vegetable taco. It can be a, a, probably your favorite, maybe meat. It can be uh, your favorite chicken tacos, if you prefer. So you can see the combination here, the chili element, the herbal tone, the grapefruit. So that citrus, when you're going to bite into one of those tacos, you really feel it. That is super interesting. So element of tacos, of course, is a Mexican dish. And this is something that really goes, we want to replicate it, something dedicated to Mexico. Now, let's, um, let's, uh, let's have a look at this, this wonderful cocktail. So super simple to make. Three ingredients, pretty much. Uh, we saw uh, the, as, as a core, no, we saw the grapefruit there, the chili, the grapefruit, and the sweetness. So that really, really interesting on that. Now, if you really want to have a bit of a uh, kick to that, you can actually use uh, this one, which is the, uh, the gin, as I mentioned today. So this is something really interesting. So instead, if you don't have your tequila, which is normally difficult to find no alcoholic tequila, we can actually use as a nice gin. And you can smell the citrus, superb. So it really gives a nice extra aroma. Now, because we already played with a lot of these ingredients, so that's something that we really kept on the side for today. So very interesting, the usage of those elements. So this is something we like to do as a spicy gin, if in case you want to use it. So this is another great recipe. I will say, Shanaz, I'm sure we have a, probably a few questions from our uh, viewers. Yes, we do. A quick one from Sai. He says, Mr. G, I would like to know what type of drinks we could make with coconut water and the tender coconut inside it. And I would also like to know what kind of food to serve it with. Okay, so question is what kind of drinks we can make with the coconut water and what kind of food will go with that, yeah? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, oh, really good. I like coconut water, one of uh, my favorite, especially now during the hot summer of Dubai. What a better way, you know, we have a lot of fresh coconut, uh, not really growing here, we can import them. We can find ready in the can, so beautiful. Uh, now, in terms of mixing, coconut water is very light, very delicate, so you gotta be careful. I will say for me, when you play, you have to play with very simple, so even a couple squeeze of lime will work super well with your coconut water, uh, so not going too much um, into other flavors. Uh, some berries, you know, berries also works very well with the coconut water, and in terms of food, well, it gotta be. It has to be Caribbean Creole style. So even if you if you fried some uh, some nice calamari, I will say, you know, with some uh, some sweet and sour chili sauce, it will will work with some coconut. So that's how I will go for today. But again, it's very personal. Or maybe a pomelo salad also. You know, my friends in Thailand they love that pomelo pomelo salad. So I think I will definitely go with that as well. Yeah. And then we have Anisha. Anisha would like to know, just like with wine, which kind of mocktails would could be served with white meat and with red meat? Okay. White meat or red meat? One second, I lost my plate. I will get to the plate next to you so you guys can see everything. So what, uh, the question is uh, red meat and white meat. Now, um, well, we mentioned this at the very beginning. So what happened there is that the the actual the 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 tannin that what we're looking for when we say a red meat uh, is that something that really um, we don't find in no alcoholic cocktail unless we explore some of the of the uh, berries so even a black tea 
imagine a black tea that's very famous for their tanning, it really can work with a good uh, uh, red meat. If you think about uh, white meat or your chicken, your turkey, uh, stay light, you know, something that depends on what you are uh, um, heating with. So I will say even something like this, very lemony will work very well because if you do your uh, chicken in a salad, for instance, that will work. I think my bruschetta came back, so I will definitely bring to you. Thank you very much for the guys that are assisting in the studio here. That's pretty nice. So I can show you everything here. There we go. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Shanaz, that would be my, my answer for this one. So uh, in terms of really showcasing, understanding how to really balance in that sense. Yeah. Just a last question, not to do with food pairing, but rather the experience. So Anisha would like to know again, what's the reason behind using a straw in some drinks and not in others? Okay, well, that's a very nice question. Thank you, Anisha. That's, pr that, that's very good and very up to trend, I will say. Now, we saw a huge trend and we're very happy the fact that, of course, to reducing the amount of plastic we are using, uh, which we can open a completely different subject, but we stick just to the straw today. Uh, the fact that many people removing the plastic straw and they're using another straw, paper or stainless steel or glass or bamboo, whatever it is. Uh, now, the experience is that every cocktail will show you uh, 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 the way it has to be served and, and it definitely it deserves a straw or not. Now, a cocktail like this with the carbonation, a cocktail like this, nice and short, with uh, light carbonation inside, uh, very fruity, very elegant. Really, those two cocktails, they don't really need any kind of, uh, of, of the actually straw serving, uh, unless you really, you are bothered by the, the actually, the garnish here. But this garnish is actually functional garnish. What you can see here is this is a, gives you really a lot of aromatic, it's part of the experience here. So the straw is is very you know is always a personal. I will say it's not highly recommended. Also, you can enjoy the basil and the mint while you if you know if you uh, going with the food as well. Now, if you go for uh, uh, let's say a straw cocktail, I will say if you do any if you're using a blender, so a frozen cocktail that's much more thicker. Definitely, I will say that your experience when you're drinking by the glass and by the straw by the straw is the way. So we don't say not to straw to all the cocktails, but we'll say to reduce, and we're designing cocktails that really, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, the usage of the straw is much more less. So I will say frozen cocktail will go with the straw, and uh, the one are uh, light carbonated like this, definitely they don't really need the straw. Again, very personal, but that will be my recommendation to really, to really get the experience, yeah? Thank you, Giovanni, I think. We've answered all the questions for today. Fantastic. Okay. So before we wrapping and I give you back the entire screen, I will say uh, thank you, uh, everyone that really take their time today to watch us. Today was all about food friendly categories. So really explaining a bit of the fundamental uh, why the do and don'ts, uh, even if I always mentioned that the flavor profile is very personal. Um, I'll tell you why, because uh, uh, you know, through the time we always reading, documented, and we know, you know, the world is beautiful. We all have different, we all different in the way we really perceive the flavor. So this is creates a lot of a fascinating. Imagine that it's very popular. Uh, I was talking to my friend, you know, she's from US, very funny. She said, oh, we love milkshakes with the fries. That's something that uh, for me, grow up in the south of Italy, uh, with a very simple flavor, I cannot get a, you know, that milkshake and fries. Why? It's the way we grow up, the way we really have that taste. But, you know, if you look in details, uh, that level of sweetness works very well with the level of saltiness. So the basic principle is there. Maybe I will work on something else. So, but if that works for you, hey, happy days, you know, that's really, really up to you. So this is what we saw today. A bit of a journey understanding the different flavor profile. We showcase a couple of recipes here. You know, the, the beautiful, uh, we call the spicy gin paloma. In this case, we, uh, we can use the gin instead of the tequila, the no alcoholic. Then we have the, uh, the grapefruit, the apples, and all these beautiful flavors together. Shake it with a bit of agave. And this one is a classic lemon mint. 
And again, two classic combination here, a tacos that can be vegetable, you know, that really goes super well or with meat, white or red, or you can actually have with the fish. And this one, it was in a classic bruschetta with a nice cream of artichoke and beautiful peppers and, and the tomato, you know, all mixed together with a, slice, with a bit of onion and the basil that recall everything. So this is what we really did today. Uh, we had some fun. Personally, I did, you know, it was, it was great. And I'm sure when we finish the session now, we all ready to go and eat everything is here and drinking everything with our friends behind the camera. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. And we'll see you next week because we talk about teas and coffees. So check it out. Thank you. Ciao, Shanaz. Ciao, Caron. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Mr. G. That was very, very informative. And indeed, what you drink with your food can actually bring, bring your food alive. And uh, thank every one of you for being with us. We, and Mr. G, we have someone from Trinidad who wakes up at 6 o'clock in the morning to be with us and watch you on your show. Thank you, Zyra. Thank you very much for taking the time to come on. Over to you, Karun. Thank you, Shanaz and Giovanni, for this fantastic session. Uh, wow, you know, amazing food pairing today. And, you know, can't wait to try it. A quick note, you can download today's recipes uh, from the handout section. Also, an email will soon follow with the replay video of this webinar together with the handouts as well. Lastly, we encourage you to create the dishes demonstrated today, uh, the mocktails, and also share them on your social media platforms by tagging at Liquid Alembic and at ICC Dubai. We look forward to seeing you next Tuesday, as mentioned by Mr. G, teas and coffees. Wow, another exciting session that we can look out for. Again, goodbye from all of us here. Bye.